Welcome back to my VRA 7.3 video series. Today we're going to talk about network profiles and business groups. I will create one business group. You can have multiple business groups. For example, if you have accounts or development, IT, etc. And you want to make sure that every business group or part of the business I mean, the name suggests that already anyway, um, has a different set of resources or different set of reservations. Um, but as a lab, I don't really care about that. But depending on your environment, obviously, you, you may or may not need one or two business groups. Well, one or two or more. Um, then I'm going to create network profiles, which essentially are a set of network settings, so we're going to have the IP ranges, subnet masks, DNS servers, and so on. And these will be external networks. So we also have NAT and routed networks, or routed networks. But we're going to do that in a later movie, or in a later video, where we discuss NSX integration. But here we just go with a plain external network. In 7, you won't find internal networks anymore, so you had that in previous versions, but here you only have natted, rooted, or external. And these are essentially just port groups in vCenter, and the network profiles attached to said port groups. So let's go. So let's start with a business group. Um, one of the requirements to create a business group are machine prefixes. And this is, again, just a good example why you should probably learn or why it's also worth having separate user accounts or separate roles because you may not notice that for machine prefixes, you actually need to be fabric admin, whilst when you create a business group, you need to be tenant admin. So if you have just a one admin being able to do everything, you wouldn't necessarily see what the difference is. But anyway, so I'm just going to log in as a fabric admin. And the machine prefix is essentially that, exactly. So when you create a virtual machine via a blueprint, your virtual machine name is auto-generated with a machine prefix and a random number. I say a random number, this is a, this is a sequential number. Um, a lot of times you will find that you have a lot of prefixes if you do have automatic naming of the via virtual machine. For example, web, DB, etc., DMZ. Uh, I mean, that's the, the last environment I worked for. They had web, app, DB, and DMZ. Um, so we go the machine prefixes. Um, but you can still create a custom host name. But even so, there's a custom property essentially, which gives you the option to edit a host name during the deployment. But despite that, you still need a machine prefix, even if you don't end up using it. It's just one of those little things in VRA. So I'm just going to call it VRA hyphen. So every VM that gets deployed with VRA starts with VRA hyphen. Two digits means goes up to the number of 99 and would then roll over. And the next number is zero. So I'm just going to start at zero. But as I say, it's unlikely I'm going to use that anyway. So that is for the prefix. So I'm just going to look out now. So log out the Fabric admin, and as mentioned, in order to create a business group, you need to be a tenant admin, so I log in as a tenant admin. So administration, users and groups, business groups. As I say, that will be to separate your internal company business groups, for example, and you want to assign reservations to different groups, but I'll just gonna have the one. Very nifty, I'm going to call a business group, send manager mails to, so that will be myself, so I'm just going to call myself, well I'm the VRA admin, just going to give that email address. Um, we created earlier an active directory policy to move them to a particular OU. Once more, that is another way of using business groups. So if you have OUs for different companies or internal departments, you can use these to separate them into different OUs as well. So I'm just going to go next. So the group manager here, again, I'm going to use VRA admin. 
I haven't created a business school per se. Um, support rule that would mean you can create a deployment on behalf of someone. So if you click the eye, you can see. So you can see the description. I have one or more users who can request and manage catalog items on behalf of other members. I don't need that. Shared access rule, it's also a new thing in, in 7.3, I believe. And that means you can use and run actions on the resources that are deployed by other business group members. Again, I, I, I don't use that. But to use our rules, I do use that. So who is able to deploy virtual machine or oh, resources? For me, it's VRA users. Here I'm using the actual group. But I'm also happy for the admins to deploy anything. It doesn't really matter. So I have the admins user group and the users user group as groups who can utilize VRA and the VRA admin as the group manager rule. And that is that. Again, default machine prefix, as I said, that is a requirement, so you wouldn't be able to actually save it without it. Active Directory Container, I'm not using it, that is for whim only, so that doesn't really matter to me. And finished, so that is the business group. That's the first step done for that. Then I mentioned we're going to create network profiles in this video. That wouldn't be tenant admin, that's the IS admin. So let's like look back out again. IS admin. Let me just show you in the vCenter what it actually looks like. So the vCenter I'm using at the moment, I'm only configuring the one um, site in VOA because that is the site connected to NSX. We will be able to connect to the second site as well, but I'm just going to do this. So if, I, if you look, the network profiles on the uh, site A, VCS AA01, you can see there are a couple of port groups. That is the one Dot two, you can see the, the octets. I just named it accordingly. You can rename it anyway, but these are, as you can see, virtual wires from NSX, but these are just presented as port groups anyway. So that's 172.100. And in terms of when it comes to what networking is it, because we do need the network configuration or the network details of that. So if we go to the logical router, this is all running OSPF, but that would be outside of this video. So we can see we have here the IP addresses, the gateways essentially. It's the 172.101.172.201. So these are the gateways, slash 24. And that is that. So as mentioned, we're going to, what am I saying, IS admin? Such a dummy. Let's go back out again. Let's go back in this fabric admin. Such a little dummy. Because it's fabric admin, not the IS admin. No idea why our, why our brain said IS admin. But anyway, so we go into fabric admin, reservations, network profiles. As mentioned, you have external NAT and router. We only go for it in external. I give the network profile um, as basically a, a name, so it's easy for me to remember what it actually is. So it's one seven two one zero X or zero. Okay. So that's going to be this one. So we're going to use IPAM. The gateway is 1.1, 0.1. So that's the gateway. DNS, just going to use Google DNS. So none of my virtual machines should go into my domain. So that's just for test. Just essentially for 
testing essentially. I don't need any DNS suffixes, etc. Network range. So we call for the. I'm just gonna call it the L. LDR, DLR, DLR range. Start IP one six two is it the one zero dot? I'm just gonna give it some random IPs. To be fair, I mean, uh, there's no chance I'm gonna put that many VMs on that anyway. We're just going to hit apply, go to IP addresses, uh, there we go, start IP, 100 to 100, no allocated, no destroyed, no expired, okay. Let's create a second one. So this will be 172.2.0.0. Okay, but this one's going to DNS again. So just Google and DNS. IP ranges. Again, DLR range. 2.0.100. And then this one goes to 1.99. Apply network profile saved. Okay, so these are now the profile. You can see there's no no EIPs used yet. So the network range again, there's still hundred unallocated. I'm gonna see those allocated in here, um, and that is it. So we have the network profiles for these ranges. The next will be the next video will be about reservations. Um, so I'm just gonna open the mask so you see what I meant earlier with mapping the network. It's just gonna click 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 clack clack clack. Um, so what I mean is this is the power group we've seen and that's the one we just created, right? Um, actually, I'm going to create another network profile. So the network profiles can be used for any site. So they're global, that doesn't really matter. But I also said that these two IP ranges, they're only available in site A. But now I'd like to do um, a range for site B. So if I just say out of a WIMP, essentially it doesn't really matter to me. But if I just say, let's, you know what, my second site just connects straight To the external, let's just assume I don't have any NSX running on that side, oh, which I don't. But if I go to the second side, I have an external uplink. So I'm just going to use that. That could be my domain joint VMs, for example. Yeah, so that is the gateway. I think my DC was dot three. That's right. So there is and also what my DNS is. So DNS is dot three. DNS suffix is vegan code k. And I'm just gonna use that then as a test for the main join ones. And I'm going to use. Uh, C range, I don't know, I'm bad at thinking about names. Let's just say to 50, 60, dot to 59. Let's make it to 59. What am I? Am I drunk? <laughs> Sorry. 240 to 249. Suddenly forget how IP addresses work. Right, so this this will be external. That's my gateway. And okay. 
So that means when it comes down to creating reservations, I'm going to create two reservations, one for site A, one for site B. Site A will have these two IP ranges configured, and site B will only have the external one configured. And yeah, that is it for the business groups and for the network profiles. So in the next part, we're going to tie everything together. So we have the business groups, we have the fabric groups, we have our, well, we have the network profiles, and then we're going to create some reservation policies and create a reservation for both sites. So, so the reservation policy will then basically lock blueprints to a particular reservation. But we're gonna we're gonna go there when you'll see. Okay, see you then.